Hey y'all, it's your girl Dee Dee and I'm back with another video. So I wanted to bring this to our talk because I actually entered into a debate with some friends on the topic, um, are New Year's resolutions good, right? So does it make sense to um, set New Year's resolution? Before I jump into this video, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Click the bell so you're notified when we drop another video. Before I actually answer the question, put it down in the comment section right now. Do you think New Year's resolutions are good or do you think they're bad? Um, also add if you've actually created your New Year's resolution. I made a video yesterday about how to set up yourself for the New Year and how to set realistic resolutions and prepare yourselves for um, some things that could happen unexpectedly throughout the year. But in talking to my friends, a couple things piqued my interest. And I'm wondering if you're on the same path or wavelength as I am, or maybe we can even have a discussion in the comment sections here as well. New Year's resolutions can be really good. They have great benefits, right? They um, get you motivated for the beginning of the year. Um, they they allow you to take some time to figure out what you'd like to do for yourself. So it's positive reinforcement. It can be very um, encouraging and engaging and it, it allows you to reflect on some, do some self-reflection, right? So it's it's great in that aspect. But let's, let's look at the flip side of New Year's resolutions. Because I think that's an important question to answer. Um, are news resolutions good? But if we look at it through another lens, we can see that news resolutions can sometimes set us up for failure, right? Because we start the year, um, and if you've driven past any gym the past couple days, the parking lots are filled. You know, as you go throughout the year, the cars dwindle down, but I'm talking about like everybody's in the gym because it's January and we said it's going to be a new year, new me. I'm tackling health. My health is my wealth. So I am going to ensure that I'm, I'm good in that aspect. But sometimes that can be unrealistic, especially when it's not something that you're used to. So if you are a person who has decided, you know, like, for example, I want to tap into my healthier side in 2024, um, my suggestion would be easing into it. So don't go from not going to the gym at all to now going to the gym five days a week or seven days a week because then you'll experience burnout. Maybe ease your way in. So I'll start with um, one day, test it out, two days a week three days a week and if you want to make it up to four days a week depending on your schedule then you do it that way that way you can measure your expectations a little bit better um, it reduces or slows down the chances of a burnout and it helps to still keep you motivated and that's what you want right you want to remain motivated um, the other thing that sometimes happens with the whole New Year's resolution which is why I spoke about this yesterday um, in yesterday's video, a lot of times people aren't very specific. It's a very general goal, right? So I want to have a healthier life in 2024. But what does a healthier life look like? What, what does that mean for you? Does that mean having three meals each day? Does that mean going to the gym and having three meals? Does that mean, um, you know, at home workouts, taking the dogs out for a longer walk? What does it mean specifically to you? Does it mean not eating out more? So being very specific can help to um, maintain those resolutions that sometimes seem to um, fall short very quickly or fall short after January, right? And we wanna maintain. Um, consistency is another one that I'll tap back into in a bit. The next thing we wanna do, uh, we wanna ensure that we're not having this all or nothing mentality. Right, so similar to the example with the gym, it's almost like if I don't go every day, then um, I'm not going at all. And if I do that, then I'm not meeting my goal. 
but pacing yourself may be a better way to approach your goal. So not all or nothing, but basically saying, I'm gonna do this in a timely manner. I'm gonna ensure that I'm still being conscious of where I'm at right now, uh, even though I'm my mind may be focused on where I wanna be. So for example, with the all or nothing mentality, uh, you may you may fail at something. And instead of seeing the failure as a setback, you see the failure as an end all be all. So that's it, you've written it off completely. And we don't want you to fall into that because again, that reduces that motivation that you've just come into 2024 with. We wanna maintain that. We wanna push through January, hit February with the same level of motivation and continue on throughout the rest of the year. So we have to ensure that we're not going in with that all or nothing mentality where failures or failures aren't setbacks, but yeah, where you're not seeing your failures as your setbacks, which is what we want you to be able to see them as. So just because I may fail at something or I fall short, it's not that it's end all be all. I can get back it. I can try again and I can make it work, right? Just needs to change my strategies. Um, and then I think that another big thing that we were able to identify within this discussion is that a lot of times when we think of New Year's resolutions, I know we know that it's for the entire year, but sometimes it sounds as though how we identify with it and how we visualize it it's not necessarily for december of 2024 sometimes it's like for february 1st 2024 if that makes sense so we don't identify that this is a year long or year round self-improvement it's almost as though the improvement that we would like to see or we've identified in january sometimes we want to see it very quickly and we don't always get the quick results that we'd like, which then impact our views of self, impact our self-worth, our self-esteem, which taps into us feeling low about ourselves, or feeling sad and feeling as though we're not adequate and entering this downward spiral. So that's another negative that we were able to identify within um, New Year's resolutions, if we're being honest. And then I'm back to my consistency a lot of times when we set up our goals at the beginning of the year, which is why I tagged into the SMART goals, we have to be very conscious of what it means to say to ourselves, I'm going to go to the gym three days a week. Because consistency is key in the sense where setting up a routine is important. If you know that based off of your schedule, you're unable to actually go to the gym three days a week, but you know for sure you can go two days a week saying to, to yourself, I'll go to the gym two days a week. And if I can, you know, weather permitting, work permitting, I'll go an extra day. But to set yourself up with saying, I'll go three times a week, but then you don't end up going three times a week because you knew your schedule wouldn't allow you to, that's where you put yourself back into um, that all or nothing mentality and you feel bad about yourself and you feel as though you failed and then with feeling as though you fail, you feel as though you're not doing the self-improvement that you had planned for yourself um, and you feel as though it's been an unrealistic expectation when that necessarily hasn't been the case. It's because we lacked the ability to make our goals very specific or we didn't make the goal specific at the beginning to identify here's how we can make it make it make sense, make it work. Um, so in being consistent as well, it's not just for the day or for the week, it's throughout the year. So if you've identified something, for example, I'm gonna save the $3,000 that I mentioned in the previous video for the year, what does that look like? If it looks like saving $150 bi-weekly, and you really wanna be consistent with that so that you can have the $3,000 at the end of the year, that may mean you have to say no to certain events. Are you able to allow yourself to get involved in a routine like that so that you can reap the benefits in December? Or are you able to even contribute more to that and be able to reap the rewards even earlier than December? So those are some of the things that um, 
come up in terms of uh, the negative side of New Year's resolutions and how it can, while it can be a great benefit, it could also be a disservice to some of us who are very adamant on setting New Year's resolutions, but we're not specific and it ends up messing with how we see ourselves, how we view ourselves and our our inability, for lack of a better term, to complete a task when that's not even the case. The goals initially set just weren't realistic enough for us. So I'd, I'd like to hear from you. I know I've listed a couple things, but are there anything else that you think of um, that are some negatives toward New Year's resolutions? Maybe you've decided not to do New Year's resolutions anymore uh, because you had a personal experience or do you disagree with what I've said? Do you feel as though New Year's resolutions are amazing and they've been good for you and they've kept you motivated? Share that as well. We'll love to hear from you. So put it all in the comment section below um, and we'll talk next time. Don't forget, here at TMI, we are thought-provoking, motivational, and inspirational. It's a place where we'll continue to have taboo conversations.